Well, that definitely could have been worse. I was expecting a complete and utter massacre by the Buffalo Bills against our very own Green Bay Packers. But the Packers are only able to lose by 10 points. And that's after giving up 24 points in the first half. The final score of the game was 27 to 17 in favor of the Bills. But, I mean, they're, I'm actually kind of hopeful now looking at this team. Because as soon as we get into the stats, you'll see why. But let's first go over um, the bad things. One, the defense in the first half could not stop the Bills, deep, Bills offense. That was honestly to be expected as the Bills, I think, are the best team in football. They got uh, the best offense. Josh Allen is probably going to be MVP. He is absolutely incredible of a talent. And there were some really stupid penalties done by the Packers in the first half, too. With starting linebacker Quay Walker being ejected for shoving an opposing coach that was trying to help him up. Yeah, that was real smart. But, I mean, I don't really have too much to complain. We outgained them on the ground. We outgained them total yards. We had more plays. We had less turnovers. The main, we had more time of possession. The things though, the Bills are just a more talented team than the Packers, and that is what made, what I mean, the difference. And so let's go through the scoring. It started off in the first quarter with Josh Allen passing to Dawson Knox for a one-yard touchdown. And then the second quarter, Josh Allen was able to hit Stephon Diggs for a 26-yard touchdown. Then the Packers answered about six minutes left in the second quarter with a Romeo Dobbs 19-yard touchdown dime from Aaron Rodgers. And then the Bills were able to tack on 10 more points before the end of the half with a seven-yard run by Isaiah McKenzie. And then a 42-yard field goal for Tyler Bass. And then scoring really went down for both teams in this second half. In the third quarter, Mason Crosby was able to kick a 38-yard field goal to make it 24-10 in favor of Buffalo. Tyler Bass then answered with his own 38-yard field goal for 27-10. Then Aaron Rodgers was able to find Samari Toure down the middle for a 37-yard game. The reason why Toure was in that Two of our receivers in Lazard and Cobb were out for this game, and then Christian Watson unfortunately got hurt with a concussion on the screen. But that is unfortunate. Like this guy, I think has a lot of talent, but he's just not able to stay on the field due to injury. Honestly, I say maybe you just sit him for the rest of the year so his body can just heal instead of trying to rush him out early every time. Because I think he has the talent to be a really good receiver. Okay, Packers stats: Aaron Rodgers. Went 19 for 30 with 203 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Was sacked twice. That is one area that was concerning. Even though he only got sacked twice, there was a lot of pressure, especially on the interior of that line. Elton Jenkins was out for this game. And so it was like Zach Tom was in at left guard. And then we had Josh Myers and John Runyon out of the interior with Josh Neiman and Bakhtiari was thankfully back. But the start of the game was the running game. And particularly in Aaron Frickin' Jones, who had 20 rushes for 143 yards for an average of 7.2 yards per attempt. A.J. Dillon had 10 rushes for 54 yards for a 5.4 average. Then Rodgers added in his scramble for 11 yards. Where was this the past three weeks where we just feed our great running backs down the throat? Because the goal of this game was to keep the ball out of Josh Allen's hand for as long as we could, which is kind of weird because that's normally what teams do to us when Rodgers was good, and yeah, you know what I mean. But, like I said, just better talent won out. And also, we the receiving core was very much decimated. Romeo, uh, re leading receiver today was Romeo Dobbs, had four receptions for 62 yards and a touchdown. Samari Toure had his second ever career grab, which is also his first career touchdown, so good job for the rookie out of Nebraska. Robert Tunney went 5 for 35. Uh, Amari Rogers had a catch for 22 yards. Aaron Jones had four for 14, and Christian Watson had one for 12, and was subsequently had a concussion from that. Defense-wise, they did struggle a lot in the first half, but in the second half, they're able to generate a little more pressure on Josh Allen, and were able to force turnovers. Safford games. Preston Smith had five tackles. 
Kenny Clark had four tackles. Rasul Douglas had a really good game. Had five tackles, a sack, a pass deflection, and an interception to Josh Allen. Eric Wilson, who is a new pickup by the Packers, who's been mainly on special teams now, had a, this other sack in the game. And Jair Alexander had four pass deflections and an interception in this game, which really kind of helped get the Packers within striking distance of the Bills. And then Isaiah McDuffie also came in after Devondre Campbell got hurt, which is not very good. He had four tackles in his first like meaningful action outside of special teams. And so, I mean, the main reason why we lost is that we weren't as effective as the Bills were on the play, on the offensive side of the ball. And penalties. Penalties and then injuries as well really stood us in. Like I said, Quay Walker being a bonehead for a play and Luckily, he's not being suspended by the league for the incident, but that didn't help. And then two really key guys go down for us, and Christian Watson, who we want to see more out of this kid. He could have potentially had a really good game if he was able to be on the field. And then losing to we don't I don't know what the status for Devondre Campbell is, but he left the game and did not return, so that is a little bit concerning for last year's All Pro. But the Packers, if you look ahead the next few weeks. They are playing the 1-6 Detroit Lions in a game that should hopefully be able to, if we do the exact same game plan, win. But then we have a game against the Cowboys who are looking really, really good with that stout defense that their offense started to click up. And then we play the Titans and then the Eagles and then we have the Bears before our bye. So if we're going to make a push, we got to start with winning next week. Cowboys are going to be tough. We probably might not win, even though we, though we do always beat them in Lambeau. The Titans, we might be able to handle, but the Eagles, who knows how that game is going to go? Because the Eagles are looking really good, the best of the NFC, I say by far. And then, well, the Bears are the Bears. But that is just my initial thoughts about the Packers game against the Bills. I am pleasantly surprised that we did not get murdered. I was planning this whole thing of starting off with a funeral speech, if that were the case, but. I'm glad it turned out this way. It gave me hope that we may be able to turn around in a very, very mediocre NFC this year. And we can sneak in as a 7 or 6 seed and maybe make a run. But that is all I have for this Week 8 reaction and breakdown of the Packers' loss to the Buffalo Bills. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We continue with more Packers breakdowns going on and doing some reviews of the Brewers 2022 season. And until next time, I will see you around.